Welcome to this Cure Connections program titled Head and Neck Cancer Through the Eyes of a Patient. I'm Meryl Kaufman, a certified speech language pathologist and founder of Georgia Speech and Swallowing, LLC. I'm joined today by Dr. Yitzhak Brook, a professor of pediatrics and medicine at Georgetown University School of Medicine, who was diagnosed with throat cancer in 2006. Together, we will discuss the prevalence of head and neck cancer, what unique challenges patients may face, and how one can adjust to life after receiving treatment for their disease. Dr. Brooke and I also serve as board members on the Head and Neck Cancer Alliance. Dr. Brooke, let's talk about head and neck cancer in general. What's the difference between head and neck cancer associated with the traditional risk factors such as smoking and drinking and HPV related head and neck cancers? <laughs> Exactly, yes. So the HPV viruses, um, typically in the oropharynx, the tonsil and the tongue bases, are certainly rising in incidence as compared to the traditional head and neck cancers, which are decreasing in incidence. Um, in fact, it's anticipated that in the year 2020, the HPV-related oropharyngeal cancers are going to surpass HPV-related um, cervical cancers, which are typically what you think of with the HPV virus. So that is a new set of patient population, but the good news is, is that the survival rates are better for the HPV-related head and neck cancers versus the non-HPV-related cancers. Can you speak a little bit about the incidence of the two? Uh, the incident of uh, head and neck cancer uh, is uh, not uh, as high as others. Like colonic cancer or breast cancer in women or lung cancer, but it's uh, around the ninth or tenth cause of cancer in the world in this country. In countries where there is smoking and alcohol consumption, it's a higher rate. HPV is usually happening in younger people in the late 30s, early 40s. And fortunately, we hope that uh, it could be prevented by vaccination, although the proof that it can uh, is not yet available because uh, the incubation period for uh, the cancer, as you may call it, uh, is, uh, takes 20, 30 years, so we don't really know. Fortunately, even though HPV is very common, uh, the occurrence of HPV-related cancer is very, very rare. Correct. Um, in terms of the vaccination for the HPV virus, agree, the proof certainly isn't definitively out there yet, but the vaccine protects against the strain of virus that ultimately can lead to head and neck cancer. So the thought is, is that um, by preventing the contraction of the virus, hopefully we can also prevent these head and neck cancers, which is why the American Academy of Pediatrics and the CDC recommend that children between the ages of 11 and 12 female and males um, are vaccinated prior to sexual debut in the hopes of preventing these cancers down the road, um, certainly. So yes, um, ca uh, head and neck cancer does account for about 6% of all cancers worldwide with about 500,000 cases worldwide. And um, in the United States, we anticipate about 65,000 a year, I believe. Um, and they do occur more frequently in men, almost twice as often in men than in women. And, um, and typically people over the age of 50 in the traditional head and neck cancers, but certainly there's a change in that with the introduction of the HPV-related cancers. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, 
prevention in terms of things that we can do to prevent the risky behaviors? 